Hello there, welcome to Talking TV. The sun is out and although Network may have gone kaleidoscope and their TV brain shop lives on and I've had a delivery. So I'm just going to open this one up. Look at this. Da, 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 da. Now, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this at all. I've heard about it. I've seen the trailers on Facebook. Um, but this is The Optimist. So if you love Mr Bean and you love your silent comedy, you are going to love this. Judging off the trailer, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. It was made for Channel 4. It's just under six hours in length. So it's Enritel. Um, <clears throat> as I say, it was an early programme for Channel 4. And um, the first series, at least I think from what I read, was, was shot in America. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Uh, Kaleidoscope, uh, I've got a From the Archive collection there. And there's lots and lots of things in this. I'm just going to open it up and um, see the tagline in the corner. Who needs words? Uh, and I'm going to watch it. I'm going to let you know what I think of it. And you know what? Support Kaleidoscope with their releases. Um, because you know what? If more people buy things like this, then we, you know, with Network's demise, we might just see more things coming out through them. So let's support them. I'm just going to open this up. I like the K in the corner. If you like the um, YouTube presentation poll, uh, it's the same company. So let's uh, open it up. There we go. So here is the Optimist. And look at this. So we've got series two there. As you open it up, we've then got the making of the Optimist. Look at that! I wasn't expecting that. Uh, and it's got a link to a website at the back, theoptimist.uk, if you want to find out more information. But look at this—a fantastic colour buckler. And I'm just going to show you a couple of pages of this. Some brilliant pictures and. I did know that Sharon Davis, the swimmer, was a guest in this. Um, so, um, more pictures out of the bat. And a, an article out of the back about restoring it as well. So I bet it's going to look fantastic. Kaleidoscope always do a wonderful job. And there is a look at the first disc. So, what did I think of it? Uh, we're going to do it in two parts. Let's see what I thought of series one, and then part two, we'll have series two. Let's go. Hello there, welcome to Talking TV. Chris Benson's here. So, uh, I've unboxed it. There it is, The Optimist, and big thanks to uh, Kaleidoscope for your help. And we hope to review more Kaleidoscope releases as well in the coming weeks, so look out for them. So this is part one, looking through season one, and genuinely, this has been one of the best things I've watched all year. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, my youngest son, Arthur, has uh, watched bits of it with me as well. So uh, it's great. Absolutely fantastic. There's the back cover as well. I should just show you just show you that. Um, but the first thing, each episode has been remastered, and that is really clear to see. Um, the shots where the titles appear haven't been remastered, but I can understand why, because it'd be an absolute pain to try and recreate the titles. Uh, but aside from those little bits of the credits, it looks absolutely pristine. I mean, we're talking a show that's 40 years old and it could have been made literally today. Um, so series one ran from April the 14th, 1983 uh, to May the 26th, 1983, and it was transmitted in a good slot, prime time, 8 p.m. Uh, on Channel 4. But there's a little bit more of an explanation to that transmission time and a little bit of what I think might have gone against uh, the show. Anyway, Sea Dreams is the first episode. So this was the pilot that was made. It features Sharon Davis, the swimmer, uh, who takes up a really good role in it. Um, so basically, M. Rytel, um, his character Nigel, falls asleep in an apartment. He's watching a programme on TV, a documentary about windsurfing. And... He pitches himself on a beach and he falls in love with a girl who is Sharon Davis. And um, he's got a rival to her love and he's got to learn to, to surf if he wants to win her attention. Um, it's, a, it's really well shot. It's a brilliant opener. You can see why it was commissioned off the back of that. But in terms of scheduling, 
uh, that first episode was up against the Kenny Everett television show, which was really popular on BBC One. Uh, what was an ITV? It was a sitcom starring Paul Eddington that I've never heard of. I'm sure you, one of you might have, called Let There Be Love. It was a sitcom in its second and final series, but can't say I've heard of it. Um, so if Sea Dreams was unlucky with its first transmission against Cuddly Ken, it was just as unlucky during its second airing, its repeat. It had a repeat showing, wait for this, on Channel 4 at quarter to nine on July the 13th, 1985. You're thinking, why does that day ring a bell? Well, that was the day that Live Aid went out on BBC Two. So the repeat of Sea Dreams was, was just as Elton John and Wham were coming onto the stage. So it probably didn't get much of an audience with its repeat as well. Um, but I do like the, the episode, really, really, very clever, really well shot, and there's some really funny um, visual gags, and the location just helps, Mexico, brilliant location. So, uh, the next episode is The Good, The Bad, and The Nasty, it's not my favourite of the first series, if I'm honest, it's kind of like, uh, he's dressed for the Wild West, he's, um, he's kind of uh, learning to ride a horse, um, it was up against Fame on BBC One this episode and Falcon Crest on ITV. It's it's okay, but after the strong first episode, I was a bit disappointed. Um, but that's the best thing about this series. You can just dip in and out. You can watch one, 25 minutes, and it really doesn't matter. They're all standalone episodes and you know easy enough to watch. Episode three is Man's Worst Friend. So there's some great bits in this. I thought it was a really good episode. Um, he, he's kind of dog sitting. Uh, he ends up losing a dog. A dog ends up in the um, the washing machine, which was apparently quite controversial at the on the first transmission. There's a great uh, note about this in the booklet that comes with this. Uh, again, it was up against Fame and Falcon Crest, but another funny episode, especially the pool party scene at the end. Uh, and for me, the episode could have easily carried on. You wanted to find out what happened after the pool party scene at the end. Uh, and it ended a bit too quickly, but a really funny episode. So then you've got Healthy Body, Unhealthy Mind. He kind of enrolls at a health farm. And it's kind of run more like a prison more than a health farm. But it's a really funny episode. And so he hatches a plan to get out. So it was at 8pm again. It was on, on May the 5th. It was up against a new series of fame, Falcon Crest again on ITV. Uh, being a geek, Falcon Crest would not be on the week after. Perhaps it didn't do well in the ratings on ITV. Um, I always remember growing up, just going on Falcon Crest for a minute, one of my mum's favourite shows, but Granada, it, certainly by the late 80s, it was on during the day, daytime, so maybe it was in a bit of a decline. I don't know. Anyway, that night, it was the 1,000th episode of Top of the Pops. Um, I enjoyed this episode. Good fun ending, as I say, strong episode. Watched this one with my seven-year-old son, Arthur, as well. Great. And he loves Mr. Bean, so the optimist, um, you know, similar similar humour, and the theme tune, he said, has got stuck in his head. Uh, the next episode is kid stuff, so um, he's baby, babysitting. Um, a very, uh, a very disruptive kid, shall we say. Um, and he ends up going to the circus. It's really well shot, this one. Uh, some great visual gags. Um, so as I say, it was up against fame still, but ITV was showing a 1972 TV movie called Pursuit that week. But I really like the circus element. Brilliant. I enjoyed that episode. Bernie Rubber next. Um, so um, he helps a lady mend um, kind of a tyre that's bust. Uh, he ends up on a racing circuit, riding round. There's a race at the end. It's fantastic. So there's a race at the end. He ends up winning. It's it's great. Um, and um, in all the episodes, there's always a girl that you know that he's trying to get the attention of as well. And there's always a rival. So there's a common theme and pattern among the episodes. So it was still up against fame on BBC One. ITV had a 1975 TV movie called. Dead Man on the Run. Um, some ITV regions had murder, mystery, suspense, if you're interested. But maybe ITV had just conceded the ratings uh, to, you know, that fame was doing well. And fame was really popular, wasn't it? Um, I did like this episode, though. Just a fun half hour and um, especially the Grand Prix at the end. And the last episode is a challenge. So um, it's kind of a similar vein to the first episode, Sea Dreams. Uh, there's a surfing competition. Uh, there's also a jousting battle, which is fantastic. And there's a great article about it in the booklet that accompanies this, where they didn't always get permission for the locations that they, uh, that they filmed at. Uh, in the front of Paramount Studios and places like that, they quite often just went 
filmed secretly and got away quickly. Um, you just wouldn't get filming like that now, but it was kind of that was that was how it was filmed uh, for a lot of series one. Um, and it, it's brilliant. It's exciting. It's a great episode. Um, you know, they were just kind of it was just kind of you know you can tell the cast and crew must have really enjoyed it. Um, on May the 25th, though, so it was up against a 1972 film called Fear is the Key on ITV and the FA Cup final replay on BBC One, Manchester United and Brighton. Um, so, tough opposition in the ratings against the Cup final replay. Um, as I say, I love the booklet goes into more detail about Series 1. Um, the, the exotic locations really do make the first series. They really do. Um, you know, to take... Um, you know the picture quality as well, absolutely superb. It could have easily been made today, like I said earlier. Um, anyway, series two review coming very soon. So this is just part one. There'll also be an omnibus where you can watch both parts all together. So let me know if you've watched it. If you've never seen it, get out there. Uh, the link is there on the bottom of the screen for where you can order it. But absolutely fantastic, and I'll give you my verdict on series two very shortly as well. More to come. Bye for now.